Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. Hope you had a happy Thanksgiving. There's some very thankful teams to be moving on to the third round of the playoffs. Andy Michaud, Matt Hatfield with you, and we got a lot of playoff action. Oh, what's better than food and football this time of year as we're going from Thanksgiving to near the holidays and Christmas time of year? We start things off with a championship level showdown in Chesapeake. It's the Oscar Smith Tigers and the defending state champion Ocean Lakes Dolphins riding a 27 game winning streak. They've met three times since 2008. Ocean Lakes winning two of them, and right out of the gate, it's Oscar Smith's passing game, Sean Mitchell to Larry Chapel, and that sets up the sophomore D'Angelo White. Tigers on the board first with a touchdown. Four yard touchdown run. Tigers on the roll early, but extra point. No good. Mm -hmm. Miss, and it's only a 6 0. Keep that in mind. Could come back to haunt them. Later on, Mitchell downfield. Kevin Todd wide open. 40 yards on the touchdown reception. 13 to nothing, though, because of them chasing that extra point. Cameron Luster's kick is through and Todd the third leading receiver behind Josh Gray and Larry Chappell on the air for Rich Morgan's Tigers who come in with a defensive minded approach allowing less than 21 points in every game this year. Ocean Lakes with a high powered offense of 52.7 points per game but it's Oscar Smith's offense very crisp early on. Larry Chappell with a catch inside the 20 and that'll set up Luster's boot from 26 yards out and it looks good but it's not good. Oh no good. Missed the extra point, made an extra point, missed the 26 yard field goal. Ocean Lakes trying to get back into this thing. Here's the guy that can get him back into it. Kalen LeBourne up the middle, diving into Tiger territory. And LeBourne coming into this game needing just a couple of yards to get to 2,000. He finishes up his season with over 2,200. And you see right there that pressure of the Oscar Smith defense. Thomas Woodhouse, the junior outside linebacker, sacking Tyler Dessou. And the Tigers clamping down great early on. Yeah, big defense there by the Tigers. The offense back out on it. Here is Mitchell. Oh, that's a sack. Deontay Bradley, it's a sack for a sack. He never saw it coming from behind. Ouch. And you know Coach Chris Scott and defensive coordinator Chris Ramey will bring the pressure. It's been a huge staple of their defense over the years. Oscar Smith, what's the signature of them? Their passing game. And Mitchell finds Kalik Perry, the junior, with a touchdown of 35 yards. And Oscar Smith stunning this Ocean Lakes team that's won every game by 17 or more. They're down 20 in the third quarter. Not done, Ocean Lakes though. Here's a quick little screen. Dessou to Tylen McElhaney. Goodbye. 31 yards and he's in. Touchdown and just like that, Ocean Lakes is on the board. Final play of the third quarter. They have awoken. However, this extra oh. point by Hammer would be blocked by Perry. He's making plays offense, defense, special teams. All three phases connecting for the Tigers. Now Ocean Lakes is defense needing a stop. Mitchell throws it and it's intercepted by Taj Capert. You know him as a game breaker on offense, making a play on defense. 20 to six though, they need some points. Who do they go to for points? They go to LeBorn and well, this is what he does. Bounces off of guys in the middle. Look at this run by LeBorn. Still going, he's got a convoy down the sidelines. A 65 yard run, but it's coming back. Not all the way, it was a holding call downfield. 65 yard run, 22 yard gain. Magical run, but 17 penalties for 148 yards on the night for Ocean Lakes. Jake Lowe, the freshman, getting the Dolphins in the end zone on his 13-yard touchdown run. And here they come. The comeback is on. Ocean Lakes pulling within a score, down 20 to 13 in the fourth quarter. We've got drama. Here we go. Mitchell trying to get some of that lead right back. Hit when he throws, and that's bad news. Anthony Womack with the interception. And Womack, one of the team leaders on defense with four picks on the air. Now LeBourne inside the 10, but that Oscar Ooh. Smith defense not having it. Kalik Perry and company knocking him down. So do it again now. LeBourne, he will not get stopped this time. A five yard touchdown run, which means they're an extra point away from tying it or a two point conversion away from winning it. Extra point off the upright and hit the post. No good. It's a one point lead. So here comes the onside kick. Ocean Lake's famous for this all year long. Larry oh. Chapel scoops it up at his own 49. He's going to go all the way down to the two yard line, a 47 yard return, allowing Courtney Johnson to punch it in and finish it off. 29 to 19, the Tigers prevail behind Sean Mitchell's 220 yards passing, two touchdowns. LeBorn finishing with 223 yards right. on the ground, 24 receiving, but the Dolphins' 27 game win streak is over despite outgaining the Tigers 424 to 251. 6A North Region. South County, five point victory over Robinson. DeAndre Clayton with 103 yards passing and a touchdown while Kevin Allen led the stingy defensive effort for the Stallions with eight solo tackles and a sack. Moving on, we go up north a little bit over the river to the peninsula and it's another big time matchup. This one, Indian River taking on the Grabbers. 
These two teams have been great all year long. Hampton undefeated at 12-0. Indian River coming in with just a couple of losses on the year to Western Branch and Oscar Smith. And early on, it's Mike Smith's Scrabbers going to the running game with Traquan Smith. They get past midfield, and now it's Daz Newsom, receiver, also running the football, and he will escape a couple of defenders and get inside the 20-yard line down to the 15. Expect some hard hitting in this one. Here's Quillen. And yeah, he's going to learn this is not quite the same defense he's used to going against. The Braves, one of the better defenses in the region. They forced a field goal attempt, and it's good from Jesus Venezuela, 27-yarder. Now Hampton with Javon Quillen at quarterback coming here to Virginia Tech. He throws it over to Anton Brown, who gets hit here by Beckett and Manley and Devin Hunter. You see that Indian River defense swarming here inside the five. Now it'll be a pitch, and boy, oh. he got clobbered by Omar Butler Ooh. and Javante Beckett knocking Demetrius Strickland out of bounds. And again, they go for it. They run it, and again, the Braves' defense is there to stop it. They force the field goal attempt, and that, that's not the way to kick a field goal. Smith pulls down from behind, and Daz Newsom can't get anything on that. Just a disastrous way to end the half there for Hampton. It could have gone up 10-0 or 6-0, instead only up by three. And now Indian River will answer with Tyree Givers-Wilson going to Kyron Best as he catches it. Oh, he slips, though, on the turf monster. And now they go to that balanced attack. You pass it and run it. Ty and Smith as he is steamrolling some guys inside Whew. the 20 of Hampton. And that'll set up more Smith. Well, Hampton's got some defense, too, though. Look at this. Pushing backwards. Smith goes nowhere. Not done yet, though. Givers, Wilson in the pocket, fires. Look at that catch by Best. 12-yard touchdown, catching a crowd. Uh, one of the most sure-handed receivers in the state. Uh, in his 13 games this year, he's got a touchdown on 11 of them this year. One of the go-to guys for Glenwood Fairby, and now one of the go-to guys for Hampton. It's Daz Newsom. On returns, he is lethal. He is dazzling. Daz Newsom, 88 yards to the house, and Hampton is back on the board. Look at you gotta love this game. We got some big hits, his defense returns. 10 to 7 Hampton up. We got the mud going. This is a mudder game. Look at Smith. Look at a mud on his pants. A grinding run there. More defense from Hampton. Givers Wilson on the screen. And uh-oh. That is Devin Hunter. And that is hyperspace. See you later. 50-yard touchdown run for a hunter. The Braves take the lead 14 to 10. See why he's one of the top 50 juniors in the country going 50 yards and now healthy after missing a couple of games late in the year due to injury. And then Daz Newsom trying to one-up him with another great play. Oh, you're seeing plays made by both sides. Hampton, Indian River, both teams answering score with a score. Now Quillen, he's going to find an open man. It's Traquan Smith. Can he score? No, the Braves stop him just inside the 10. But they got a chance to score now. Here we go, Quillen this time, finds him again. Why not go back to Smith? This time he is in a nine yard touchdown run. Hampton has the lead. Givers Wilson over the middle. That is caught to the outside by Best. A pretty good gain there. Later in the fourth quarter, the handoff. No, oh, he kept it himself. The read option, Givers Wilson, 12 yard touchdown run. How well have the Braves executed that this year? 21 to 17, it was a hard hitting defensive battle, physical matchup. Now it's turning into two offenses answering each other. Quillen will slip here. It's fourth and they need a conversion badly. Quillen looking over the middle. He's got him in. No, he doesn't. It's broken up by Devin Hunter. Devin Hunter, the big breakup. Braves, though, going for it on fourth down, trying to end it. Smith up the middle gets nothing. So one more shot for the Crabbers. Two minutes to go. Can they keep this undefeated dream season going for Mike Smith and bring home their first state title in 10 years? Keep that march going. It'll be Quillen to Brown. The fumble forced by Jaquan Yuli, recovered by Tavante Beckett, and the Braves will celebrate victory on the road. Man, what a game. That was an outstanding football game. Back and forth, defense, offense in the mud. Braves moving on. 21 to 17, Tyree Givers-Wilson accounting for three touchdowns. Ty and Smith with 110 of his 130 yards rushing in the second half, while Hampton was held to 82 yards in the second half. Nine of 18 passing for Javon Quillen. Appomattox 27-21 in overtime over Richland in the 2A West. We're getting some thrillers here in the postseason, yeah. Andy. As you see, Philip Fleshman running for 105 yards, Buster Henderson helping him out, and Union a 28-27 winner over Glenver behind Bryce Spears' 288 total yards of offense for the Bears. Stay with us, though. More action coming up. We head out west as Abington and Lord Botetourt. Stay with us. Sports Report continues.
and welcome back to Sports Report. Alongside Andy Michelle, I am Matthew Hatfield. Well, Andy, I don't know if we can get much better than the first segment of playoff highlights, but the boys out in Runic are going to give their shot at it as it's the Lord Botetot Cavaliers 11-1, the number three seed playing host, the number seven seed Abington Falcons also 11-1. This might be a nail biter too. Yeah, hold on, seven nothing already for Lord Botetot. Here's Garrison Mayo on the kickoff return. Remember that name. We're going to call it a couple of times. He's out to the 45. And you see Botetot operating in the red unis. It'll be quarterback Ryan Frillin over the top too. Guess who? It's Garrison Mayo. Ooh, nice spin move. You hit that B button and they're in the red zone. You know what that means? When you get in the red zone, you're probably going to find the end zone. Well, Friars this time keeps it himself to the corner and he's in a 15-yard touchdown run. That made it 20-7. to Botetot on top. We move ahead to the third quarter. Now you've got Abington there with their quarterback, Jake Sturgill, looking for a man, and he's got one open. What a catch by Jeff Wallace, 33 yards to the end zone, and the Falcons are coming back. It's a 20-14 to 14 game. Lower Botetot now back on offense. Botetot handing it off this time. This is Lithgow, 13-yard run for Bradley Lithgow to the outside, getting the running game going. And Lithgow key along with Noah Fletcher. Lithgow committed to VMI to play his college football, and it'll be Lithgow right here with a five-yard touchdown run as he Bulls through on a couple of defenders. Lord Botetot extending its lead. Uh, not quite done yet, though. Abington to the outside. It is Sturgill to Wallace and goodbye. 61 yard touchdown run. Abington answers. It is a closer game, 21 26. Someone might want to get on that guy named Wallace. He's pretty good. So, too, is this running game of Lord Botetot as it's Lithgo again, a 25 yard scamper. Cavaliers answering a score with a score. We're trading touchdowns at this point. Sturgill over the middle of Derek Yates. Couple of good moves. 42 yard gainer as he's still going way inside Baratat territory. He's down there, but not done yet. Sturgill into the fourth quarter. Blitz is on, stands in, fires, but it's intercepted. Picked off by that guy again. That's Mayo with the interception in the end zone. Coming up clutch on defense with the Falcons driving Mayo is. Now it'll be the running game again. Bradley Lithgow getting some blocking, and he's going to run with power here to the outside past the 50-yard line. And that Cavaliers running game chewing up clock, also being successful. But Abingdon will get a stop setting up this. Bombs away downtown to Yates. 46-yard touchdown. Sturgill connects. 28-32. Oh, we're going down to the maybe the last possession. This one, there's a sack by Kevin Christie as the defense making a stand for Abing, the number seven seed, trying to keep this Cinderella run going. Back to throw, it's Fraylin. He's got a man, though, and a tippy-toe catch nice by touch. Mayo. Nice touch and a good catch there. Back on the ground, it is Noah Fletcher this time, hammering his way down to the 10-yard line, and he's going to set up himself. Noah Fletcher again, five yards. This time he finishes it off, touchdown. 39-28, one last shot. Sturgis bombs away again, but nope, that's Mayo. One more time, why not? One more time we call Mayo's name. Down the sidelines, just trying to run things out. They finally get him down, but that one iced it. Final score, 39-28, Lord Baratot over Abington. That young man Mayo's got a knack for finding the football as Fletcher and Lithgow combining for 319 yards rushing and five touchdowns as the Cavaliers push their record to 12-1 overall. In the 4A East region, Cortland 27-6 over Lafayette. Virginia Tech commit Victor Green with 200 yards rushing and two touchdowns, while Towson commit Jabari Allen has a touchdown catch. The Rams suffer their first loss of the season. John Douglas had their lone score. Salem 34-7 over John Champ. Dante Claiborne, three touchdown rushes for the Salem Spartans. Deontay Tucker with a touchdown catch, while Guani Dang with three receptions for 66 yards in defeat for the Knights. And stay with us. We will come right back. We're coming back to the East with some more big-time playoff action. Right here on Sports Report. Welcome back. Playoffs continue. We've got some big time matchups already. Get buckled in for another one. Yeah, we're going to go to Norfolk, the Lake Tedder Titans, defending state champs with a 27 game winning streak, playing the Hanover Hawks, who lost to Lake Tedder a couple years ago in the playoffs, 9 and 3. Can they snap a streak like Oscar Smith did against Ocean Lakes? We'll find out. Can they tackle Daz Palmer? The answer is no, not on that one. 
And again, up the middle for Palmer, a one-yard touchdown run. Titans up early, 7-0. Who has tackled that guy, Palmer? He's yeah. around 2,000 yards. One of the best running backs in the state. And Clayton Cheatham coming back from an injury for Hanover, showing his guts and uh -huh. toughness here. A great run for him as he gets into Lake Taylor territory. Now the play fake gets hit as he throws, and it's intercepted by Temple commit Kevon Bruton. Not done yet is Palmer up the middle. Where'd he go? There he is. And there he goes. Can he outrace the defense? Wide open spaces, and they're not going to catch him. 87-yard touchdown run for Palmer. He just keeps racking them up. Extra point, two-point conversion. Good, 15 to nothing. And this didn't go well for oh. Hanover as Rayshon Griffin drills Jonathan Glor, gets a flag on the punt. That'll set up a field goal from John Dustin. And the kick is good, 26 yards. Hanover now trailing by 12. Can their defense get a stop is the big question. Well, we'll find out. Here's Wayne Davis this time to the outside. And the answer, no. No, they cannot get a stop. Wayne Davis, 33-yard touchdown run off a little reverse action, 22-3. to three. How good has the Ohio State commit Wayne Davis been this year for Lake Taylor? Much like Palmer, he's a player of the year candidate at the state level. And there's Cheatham again ripping through defenders as he carries Hanover into Lake Taylor territory. Down by 19, fourth down. They'll go for it. Cheatham will keep it. And he will get his way into the end zone, 22 yeah, to 11. In. They're coming back. Cheatham, a big quarterback. They're trying to come back. And then Palmer says, yeah, no, we're not, we're not letting you come back. 51-yard touchdown run for Palmer. Just keeps going. It is now 30 to 11 on the two-point conversion right there. He's got about 87 points in this game. Both teams like to run the veer, Andy, except Hanover doesn't have the pitch now at theirs. They've had to abandon the running game and go to the passing game because they trail. And this time it'll be Tyler Flora with a gain of 41 yards on the pass from Cheatham. Hanover's offense continuing to answer when it's desperation time. Into the fourth quarter, here is Cheatham, and he's going to take it himself. Another one-yard touchdown run. Two-point conversion is good. It's the running back, Marcus Belaza to Jacob Schneider, and it's 30 to 19. Look out, here comes Hanover. Oh, those tricky Hawks going for two, and they go for the onside kick. They got it, the visiting sideline is jumping for joy. They smell a comeback. Cheatham now to the air. Ooh, nearly Whoa. picked off by Wayne Davis. He saw his sixth pick six of the year right there. Oh, that was close, but they keep it. Leads to a 31-yard field goal by Dustin, second of the game. That is good. They creep closer, 30-22. That's resilient Hawks team. Another onside kick, and they get it again. How about this? Never say die. Hanover squad on the road. Fourth down. Can they keep it going? It'll be Bazala passing, and that one will not be caught. Lake Taylor takes over. They get the running back passing on fourth down. Lake Taylor not done. No, oh, but Huey gets drilled by Tab Patrick in a sack. One more time for Lake Taylor. Can Huey get this one off? Look at him. Dodging tackler, steps up, fires downfield, and it's caught by Richard Russell. 43-yard touch, or not a touchdown, but a 43-yard gain. What a snag by Russell, and now it's the option keeper. Huey will take it in for a five-yard touchdown as he responds from the first sack of the night. Lake Tedder's offense might have put it away, 37-22. Last gasp for Whoa. Hanover. A little swing pass, that's out to Bazala. He gets some yardage, gets out of bounds. One more shot, cheat him. Over the middle, and that's incomplete. Fourth down attempt at that would ice it. Lake Taylor takes this one, 37-22, your final. So Lake Taylor defense coming up with a couple of key interceptions from Kevon Bruton and the offense with three touchdown runs from Daz Palmer as they extend their winning streak now to 28 games. To the peninsula we go. Nice familiar rivalry here, Phoebus and Pocosin. Phoebus Phantoms trying to continue their quest for a state title. It would be their eighth since 2001, but Pocosin has other ideas behind Kyle Pulteney, running back, linebacker, dual threat player for the Islanders and coach Elliott Duty trying to get on the board first, and they will do so. Quarterback Trey Hicks, look at that tough run in the middle of the defense, and Pocosin is in. 7-0, Islanders up. Look at the fan support the Islanders have. They're on top early. Pocosin, wait a minute, what's going on here? Here's Triante Hamlin on the flare pass. He gets outside, picks up eight yards on that one. Offense trying to come back into it. Justin Wright, Hamlin again. This is a lot longer than eight yards this time. Downtown to Hamlin, 56-yard touchdown pass, seven all. First time the Pocosin defense has been scored on this postseason. They're coming off two straight shutouts, six on the year for that defense. And there's Cole Jackson, Action Jackson with the catch from Trey Hicks, setting up Chris Cochamiglio's 43-yard field goal, and it'll be blocked and deflected there. Phoebus, they stop him there. No points for Pocosin, so he stayed deadlocked at 7-0.
seven all. And we move into the later portions of the second quarter and is right getting hammered by Poultney. Fumble on the play, picked up by Pocosin. And there's Matthew Blazer, known as a wide receiver, but he's gonna take the reverse. And he's going to go all the way in. Is he in? Is he in? He yes, in? 46 check. yards. He referee in? say, and he Touchdown. got it. Touchdown, Pocosin. 14 to 7. Had the Phoebus faithful stunned a little bit. And it's halftime. Some adjustments to be made by Phoebus here. Wait a minute, what's going on? Here's Wright, though. Right downfield and a good pass to Elijah Nelson. Pretty good gain on that one. That is going to set up Becknell on this guy. Heard his name a lot during the regular season, and now he's into the end zone in the playoffs, and he ties the game at 14. Number 11 going 11 yards on 11. It's 14 all. Now Pocosin oh, with the passing catch. cap. What a catch by Brandon Peck from Trey Hicks. Here's Cachimiglio for another field goal, Ooh. and this time the 26-yarder will doink off the crossbar and go through. Not pretty, but it goes through. It's three points no matter how you look at it. Ensuing kickoff. Famous words. It's either really good or really bad. Well, if you're a Pocosin fan, it's not so good for you. Up the middle, couple of blocks, and Hamlin says, see you later. 94-yard kick return for Hamlin. 21-17 for Phoebus back on top. Now that was pretty if you're a Phoebus fan, but now Pocosin trying to get back in the lead and their offense, that misdirection, really giving Phoebus problems. And now they go to the air. It's deflected by Daquan Lewis well, and caught by Blazer. How clutch is he? Touchdown, 15 yards, Islanders up three. Phoebus on the brink of elimination. Right, trying to keep him in it downtown. Hamlin again, who else would it be? 41 yard gain to, to the five, and then they got to keep it on the ground. But now, and he's going nowhere though. That Pocosin defense stifling. So here's Stefan Tompkins' field goal from 25 yards out. It is good with 24 seconds left. They go to overtime, some extra fun. Hey, why not? This has been a great game so far. Defense, offense, and let's keep it on the ground with Becknell up the middle, grinding yardage to the five. Let's do it again. Becknell from the two is he in. He backs in. He is in. Touchdown, a two-yard run. You know what they say, if you don't succeed, try, try again, and Phoebus did that. Now it's a tricky play for Pocos, and they give it to Jackson in the blazer, but Andre Smith, he sniffed it out. Not fooled by the reverse. One last shot. Here is Hicks to the end zone. That is tipped and almost gone. One-handed attempt by Jackson. He just couldn't pull it in. And Phoebus holds on. The Phantoms escape 31 to 24. How many dramatic finishes have they had in the playoffs in the last 10, 15 years? Hamlin with 105 yards receiving and a touchdown, a kick return to score while Becknell had two touchdown runs. Matt Blazer capping a fine career with two touchdowns in the loss. For Pocosin. Well, Andy, we're getting closer to the state championship games as we move into December. We've got some state semifinal games to check out around the state of Virginia. 6A semifinals. It'll be Thomas Dale at Oscar Smith. Westfield going to South County. Don't be surprised to see an Oscar Smith Westfield showdown. In 5A, it's Indian River traveling to Highland Springs. That'll be a fun one. Stonebridge taking on Tuscarora in a regular season rematch that Tuscarora won. In the 4A, it'll be Cortland at Lake Taylor. We saw the Titans earlier in this one. Salem goes to Jefferson Forest. Might we get a rematch of the 2004 state championship at Liberty? Lake Taylor and Salem, while both are undefeated, we might get it. 3A, Magna Vista goes to Phoebus. Two teams that are powerhouses, and then it's Hopewell at Lord Potatot. Magna Vista is no ordinary number four seed. They are the defending champ, and maybe the team to beat at this point in 3A. Moving over to 2A, it's Buffalo Gap at Appomattox, undefeated number two Union, 13-0 at number two Clark County, 12-1. Watch out for Union, they're playing really good defense right now. 1A, it is Riverlands going to George with and Galax at number one Essex. Essex has won it before. This is really a wide open bracket. Galax is the long shot in that bracket. Well, we're out of time. Thanks for watching. Alongside Andy Mashaw, I'm Matthew Hacker. We'll catch you next time right here on the Cox Sports Report.